What's happening guys? Welcome to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Milan and in today's video we're going to be working on my 370Z. So more often than not, whenever you upgrade the brakes on your car, you'll typically swap out the pads and rotors for something that's a little bit better. So usually like a slotted rotor with let's say a better pad that's going to be able to withstand a little bit more heat. Both of those combined is going to allow your car to brake a lot better. But there's an upgrade from that. So if you guys saw in the previous video where I showed you how to install the different wheel studs along with the brake lines on the Z, you're basically all caught up. I swapped out the wheels and tires for lighter and stickier tires front and back. Now these tires up front have allowed me to save five pounds on the front of the vehicle and the rears I was able to save over 10 pounds, which is absolutely insane. Now that is also paired with some very sticky Hankook 285 tires. These things are gonna be absolutely insane on the street and on the track. So on the note of saving weight, we can save some weight from the braking system. And the cool thing about it is that because it's unsprung weight, we're not only gonna be able to have better acceleration, better handling, but the suspension itself is all gonna be put under less stress because there's gonna be less weight moving up and down as you go over bumps. So on the front end of the car, it's gonna make it very nimble. And on the back end of the car, because this is a rear wheel drive vehicle, I'll technically be making more power. So this is a power mod in essence. So let me show you what I have over here. So the massive brakes on the front are gonna be getting an even more massive upgrade. So these brakes that I have right here are from Z1 Motorsports, and these are a super light two-piece brake rotor and outer ring combo. So this whole unit replaces the standard one-piece cast iron brake that was on the car, or currently is. It's going to be taken off in a second. Uh, but the front brakes right here, these are the same OEM size, so 356 mil by 32. These are vented, and you can tell these are sprinkle slotted. So they're slots, but they're just in two different directions. I went with the same thing for the front as I did for the rear. So for the rear, you can see we've got 350 by 20, still a very big brake. These are vented as well. These are also sprinkle slotted, as you can tell, and the same two-piece design. Now the really cool thing about this entire setup is that this is going to save me a ton of weight. I'll put the brakes on a scale to actually show you how much of a difference there is. However, the last part that I have right here is going to be the brake pads. So I picked up some new EBC Red Stuff brake pads for the front and rear. So these are all going to be put on my Z and these are a hell of a nice upgrade over the stock parts. So first things first, the car needs to be in the air so we can remove the wheels from all four corners. Starting with the front brakes, turn the entire assembly in the direction that you're working with to give you more room. Before taking the caliper and rotor off, the pads and hardware have to come out. Using an angled pick tool, remove the small cotter pin that secures the brake pad pin in place. There's going to be another one found on the other pin just below it. Then, using a small punch and hammer, tap out each of the pins inward until they slide through the caliper and the outboard pin, which will give you enough material to pull it through the rest of the way through the cross spring and the inboard pad. Pushing down the center portion of the cross spring will help alleviate the spring pressure on the pin and allow you to pull the pin out smoothly. You can then remove the cross spring and set it aside, followed by both brake pads and their respective backing shim. Then, using a 22 millimeter socket, remove both of the brake caliper bolts securing it to the back side of the spindle. With them both out, set the caliper aside without putting much stress on the brake line. That will allow you to remove the brake rotor from the hub assembly, slide it off of the studs. So with the OEM rotor off the car, we can see that it is a single piece vented cast iron brake rotor with a blank contact patch for the brake pads. The vented rotor vanes are straight up and down. It pumps air through the rotor to cool it down while the brake rotor is in motion. These are actually a pretty cheap rotor design as the rotor on the left and right sides of the car are identical. Car manufacturers do this to cut down on production cost, but it's interesting to see this money-saving tactic being used on one of Nissan's sports cars, not to mention on the car that has the sport brakes. Goes to show that they'll save a buck wherever possible. These used rotors on a scale come in at 29.8 pounds, which is nearly 10 pounds more than the wheels that are on my car. That's crazy. With both rotors side by side, we should be able to see a bunch of differences, especially since these new brakes cost a pretty penny. So these massive 14 inch rotors from Z1 are similar to the OEM design, but better in nearly every aspect. These are a two piece design where the rotor hat and the outer ring are separate, meaning the outer ring can be made from the same cast iron material as before, but we can save a bunch of weight by manufacturing the rotor hat out of high grade 6061 aluminum. 
This puts the rotors on a diet, shedding 9.2 pounds up front and 2.6 pounds in the rear. The way these brakes shed off heat is also improved. So the vented vanes are not only curved, which helps make the rotor pump more air through them and cool it down, but the vents themselves are larger too, which further improves its ability to shed heat, along with cutting the weight down of the rotor. Using a caliper, you can see how much larger the size of each of the vanes is, which helps in keeping the temperatures down. The slotted contact patch is better than the standard blank design as well. The slots act as small cavities that wipe the face of the brake pad, ensuring that it doesn't get contaminated with anything that could affect its ability to bite onto the rotor. The nice thing about these rotors too is that you can rebuild them. If your brakes ever wear out, you can replace the outer ring separately, so you get the benefits of the two-piece rotor while only having to basically pay for the ones should you need to replace them. As for the brake pads, I'm used to using EBC yellows as they're terrific both on and off the track. They are a very capable street pad, but the biggest drawback of them is the brake dust. These red stuff pads here are just as capable ceramic street pads. They have exceptional life wear, very good braking performance, but they have very little to no brake dust. They also perform better than the OEM pads, which isn't really saying much because they aren't exactly meant for track use. But anyways, using some brake clean with a reg, wipe off any of the oil that's used to prevent the iron from rusting. When rotors are shipped, they're sprayed in a protective coating to ensure that you don't receive them rusted. Using some parts cleaner and a reg, wipe a clean so you don't introduce any of that oil onto your brake pads. You can then slide the massive brake rotor on the appropriate side of the car. Since these rotors are side specific, ensure that you don't have them on the wrong side. The orientation has nothing to do with the slotted or drilled design, it only has to do with the rotor vanes. If you're looking from the top of the rotor, the vane should be facing the back side of the car. If the vanes are up and down, you can install the rotors on either side of the car as it won't affect any cooling. Using the factory bolts that we removed, reinstall the brake caliper up to the spindle and torque those bolts down to the proper spec. I'll have the torque spec in the description box. Factory pads on vehicles deteriorate at a crazy high rate with heat. Regardless of the new pads that you're installing, you're going to want to swap the stainless backing shims onto each one of the new pads as they don't come with them. They really help under heavy braking as the backing plate of the pad can deform under extreme pressure. Transferring them from one pad to the other is super easy. Then, put a dab of brake grease on the sides of the pad where it comes in contact with a caliper to prevent it from seizing. Do the same thing for the other pad. Following that, we need to install the brake pad hardware. Slide the brake pad pins through the back side of the caliper, through the inboard pad, then the cross spring, then the outboard pad, and then through the caliper. The same thing goes for the lower brake pad pin. To install each of the cotter pins, use a Phillips head screwdriver on the back side of the pin to orientate it upwards so that you can slide the cotter pin through it. Repeat the same procedure to the other brake pad pin. With it all complete, it should look something like this. If these bad boys stop as good as they look, holy crap, we're gonna have a serious braking setup. Damn, this looks good. We gotta give the rears just as awesome of an upgrade as the front. Using a pick, Remove the upper cotter pin, securing the brake pad pin in place. Remove the lower one next. Using a punch and a hammer, tap the brake pad pins inwards to release pressure on the cross spring. Remove the cross spring along with the inner and outer brake pads. Using a 19 millimeter wrench, remove the two bolts on the back side of the caliper and set the caliper aside. Unthread any of the lug nuts that are holding the rotor onto the hub and then just wiggle the brake rotor off the car. The rear brakes are going to be quite similar to the fronts. So again, you can see that we're going from a one-piece vented blank rotor to a two-piece vented slotted rotor. The nice thing about these upgraded rear rotors is that you're going to be getting all the amazing features as we do up front, but you'll also be retaining your handbrake function, which is quite rare on two-piece rotors. There's a contact patch on the inside of the rotor hat that allows the parking brake shoes to bite onto. To install the rear rotors, you have to set the adjustment screw for the parking brake shoes to its smallest size possible. This will ensure that the shoes can fit inside the rotor hat. Then grab the new brake rotor and slide it over top of the studs and secure it in place with a lug nut. Then slide the caliper over top of the rotor and fasten it with the old hardware. Again, the torque specs are going to be in the description box so you guys can find that all there. For the brake pads, you have to transfer over the backing shims just like the fronts as the new ones don't come with them. With the same lube as before, ensure the ears have a little bit of product on them to ensure smooth operation. Slide the pads into the caliper, followed by the brake pad pins and the cross spring. Don't forget to reinstall the little cotter pins. 
insert the cotter pin into the place to finalize all the work that's going to be done down here. It should look something like this with it all said and done. This next part is very important. To set the handbrake mechanism, you want to make the adjustment screw as large as possible now by turning it down so that the shoes come in contact with the brake rotor hat, which is the contact patch for the shoes. You then want to back it off by five or six notches on the adjustment screw. That will properly set it to the right size so that the shoes will work when you pull the handbrake, but they aren't dragging while you're driving. So we're almost done. Now with the brakes installed on the front and the rear, the next thing that we need to do is change out the brake fluid. So the brake fluid that's found inside these Z's is DOT3 brake fluid. It's decent, it does the trick for regular street use, but if you want something more on the high performance end of things, especially given how nice these brakes are on the Z, you're gonna wanna switch out to something like this. This is a Motul RBF660 DOT4 brake fluid. It has a much higher boiling point than the factory fluid. And the really nice thing about this stuff is that if you accidentally, let's say, get this on your painted calipers or maybe even your wheel, it will not ruin the paint. Any DOT4 fluid will not do that. So that's why I picked this stuff up and I'm gonna be showing you guys in a soon video how to change out all the fluids on your Z. So after switching out to these amazing two-piece brake rotors, both in the front and back of the car, and my super light, nice NK RSO5 wheels and tires, I was able to shave 28.8 pounds per axle. 28.8 up front, 28.8 in the rear. Now there's a little bit of a weight difference between the rear wheels that I had on the car and the front wheels. If you guys wanna see a breakdown of how much weight I saved, you guys can find more info down below. But if you guys stay tuned, I'll be taking this out for a spin. I'm gonna be doing some brake testing to compare the before and after, and that video is going to come. If you guys wanna pick up any of the parts you guys saw in this video, you guys can find that in the description box. As always guys, same thing with the fluids. If you wanna see how to do all the fluid changes, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel because the new video is gonna be coming out after this. I'll link it in the description box and at the end of the video. So when that video is out, you guys are free to watch it. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.